After entering Pawnee's Selvar Palace, Kalan Takakandar approached the Vilakarapep soldiers who had arrived at the palace gate. What is this noise? Do you not know that the emperor lies sick within the palace? Do you not know that the enemy's army is surrounded around the castle? He asked in a stern voice. The leader of the Vilakara army said, Sir. Are those surrounding the fort enemies? How come the great Vilara of Kajumbalar became our enemy? He asked. The little recluse restrained his rising anger and said, You must ask him, if not an enemy, why has he come with an army and besieged the fort? He asked. We hear that the little prince is to be placed on the throne and crowned, said the chief of servants. Is that all right with you? asked the small gardener. The warlord looked back at his soldiers and said, Speak for yourselves. He said. The soldiers immediately shouted agreed. Agreed. Hail Pawnee's Selvar! Long live the Prince of Elaganda! They chanted. This time the slogan was stronger than before. The little gardener's face flushed, moustache twitched. But gritting his teeth, he asked, Is the hair cutting at the behest of the great lord? Or at your will? Is the emperor's will worth nothing? He asked. One of the soldiers shouted, Commander! Is the emperor safe? Sure. He asked. What is this question? Kalantaker hissed. There is some rumor in the town about the emperor. We have not been able to see him today either. So we are all very worried about his well-being. Said the leader of the soldiers. Didn't I tell you earlier why you couldn't see the emperor? The emperor was very upset today. He didn't want to see anyone. He even refused to come to the hall. What is the reason for the emperor's dismay? Why refuse to grant us Dershin? We can at least know that, can't we? Well, I tell you, the cause of the emperor's anxiety was that he knew nothing of the prince who had gone to Elam. Now that the prince himself has come, we must see the prince. We must see him in a good light. Said one of the soldiers. Yes, to see. Long live the infatuated prince! They all shouted together. The prince must visit the emperor first. Shouldn't he? Then he will come and see you too if he likes. Are you sure? May be sent to the dungeon. On a different day, on a different occasion, the warriors of Vilakara would have started a war against them for speaking so boldly. It would have been a big hit. But due to the fact that they had just seen the prince's face, or something, the soldiers of Kalantaka Kandar were also standing silently. The little hunter's hand sought his sword. He thought for a moment that he would kill the warrior who heard the above. Immediately he got over his anger and laughed out loud. Didn't you hear the question he asked? He asks if the prince will be sent to the dungeon. Well, it is not in my power to crown the prince on a lion or to send him to the dungeon, it will be according to the emperor's will. Even if the prince is to be sent to the dungeon, it must be done this way. Then you will see him. You can. Kalantakandar said with a twinkle in his eyes and turned towards the palace. He made his way to the front gate of the palace, ignoring the soldiers chanting again. There he saw Punghuali standing by himself near the doorstep. Woman! Why are you standing here? Did they stop you from coming in? He asked. No one stopped me. I stood on my own sir. Said Punghuali. Why? What am I doing there when father and son, who have been separated for so many days, meet? Go away, do you at least believe that the emperor is alive? Happy with that? Not only do I believe, but I have just come back after seeing with my own eyes that the emperor is safe. There you stand, tell those knights what you saw. They seem suspicious. Said. There is no evidence for their suspicions at this moment. Who can say that the next moment it will not be true? Woman. Are you trying to mess with me too? Are you all crazy? He asked. Commander. Many people call me mad. I should call myself mad. 
but it was only by listening to this madman's idea that today the prince was able to enter this castle without danger. I was able to meet the emperor while he was still alive. Aha! What is this? It seems that you two are spoiling the emperor's life. Do you also get mad at the gossips of foolish people and foolish soothsayers? Or do you know something else? Is it only the people and the astrologers who do evil? Did you hear the message sent by their Tamayanar a while ago? What's certain is that it's true? Said Kalan Takakandar. Commander! Why should the princess of Kajumbalar lie? Who saw it? Maybe he wanted to climb the lion and become a master. Commander! I thought so too. I changed my mind after hearing the vow the princess made this morning, said Punguzali. Woman! Perhaps you have such a desire yourself, what? After hearing that, the little farmer laughed lightly. Commander! Indeed I am mad. I stopped to speak to them, didn't I? After saying that Punguzali tried to go back. A change was immediately noticed in Kalan Takakandar. Woman, don't be angry. Just say what you came to say. Said. Punguzali turned again and said, Yes, I must say it. Otherwise, I will also regret it later, you will also regret it. Sir. If the emperor's life is in danger, the whole country and city will blame them. Even their soldiers will say it. She said. The little gardener's face shrunk. If something like that happens, I will not wait for others to blame me. I will die before the blame falls on my ears. When these brave soldiers took oath in the temple of Durga Parmshwari, I was the first to swear and guide them all. Said. What's the point? The Chola kingdom will lose its emperor and a great warrior too. Isn't it better to be on guard before that? Woman! Are you saying that I am not careful in front of you? There are so many soldiers standing around this palace without batting an eye. Why? Even the Prime Minister Anuradhar cannot enter the palace without me knowing. Do you know? I know, Commander. But even within the palace, there can be danger, can't it? What gall? Are you saying that the palace ladies will poison the emperor? Or maybe you just went in with the prince and are suspicious of that Kajumbalar girl? Said. My god! Those who suspect that gentlewoman will not have a good fate. She has no skill. Sir! Isn't there a tunnel leading into this palace? The little farmer was startled and said, Woman! What do you know about that? How do you know? No one knows about that path except three or four people. Can't those who know get back alive? He asked excitedly. Commander. I came to know about it only early this morning. I also saw a Pandian conspirator hiding there with a sharp spear in his hand. My God! What is this horrible word you say? Do you know where that path, that path, ends? Going through the treasure dungeon. Said Punghuali. Aha! Uh -huh. What you say may be true. This is the work of that mystic Mahini, who took the form of a human woman. This is the work of the female demon who has enslaved my daughter. Alas! How many times have I warned you? Girl! Are you telling the truth? Have you seen it yourself? How did you know where the path was? I found out when my aunt picked me up this morning. Who is your aunt? She is the one who was brought from Kadakare in the palanquin they sent on the orders of the First Minister, sir. While we are talking more about this here. That's true. I'm making arrangements to go to Pariyapavur Palace right away. By then, you. I'll stand on this side and watch. A.G.A. How can I believe you? How sure are you that you are not an accomplice of those Pandian conspirators? You cheated me by showing me off. Commander, then come with me. Bring a torch. Let's go and have a look together. I'll tell you the rest of the details as we go. The small farmer called some of his soldiers who went to the entrance and said something to them. Punguzali guessed that they were going to Palyavur Palace. The commander of the fort bought the torch held by one of the soldiers. 
girl. Guide me. I will see if what you have said is true, said Kalantagakangar. Even then, he still had doubts about Punga's a lie in his mind. This woman is trying to deceive herself by telling lies and fabrications, or what? Want to learn about tunneling yourself, or what? It was a ruse or something to let Kajumbalar's men through it into the fort. She could not easily deceive herself like that. Shall I be deceived like the Great Reaper, or what? Let her go ahead of everything, let's first find out if it's true that she knows the tunnel. Then we can know if it is true that the conspirators are hiding there. If that's true, my God! What a danger! Fortunately, it is not difficult to prevent it. With this in mind, the small gardener walked behind Pungazali. He was amazed at the speed with which she walked. Yes, the excitement in Pungazali was at its peak at that time. Her pace was suitably brisk. For some time in the life of Pungazali, unusual incidents were happening. But nothing like what happened that day had ever happened before. Early in the morning, her aunt woke her up from her sleep. A monstrous face was seen on the mahogany platform on which they were lying, immediately it disappeared. Mandakini got up without making a sound and went inside the covered sculpture hall with the flower pot. The same terrible face that he had seen on the upper deck disappeared for a moment between the heads of Ravana and the Kaila Angari he was holding in his hands. Both of them went near the picture. Punguzali knew that a tunnel was beginning between Ravana's heads. Mandakini first and Punguzali followed her down the Ashuranga path. Pungujali was blind at first. Such darkness was dwelling in the tunnel. Holding her aunt's hand, she staggered away. After climbing a few steps from the path, the two seemed to have arrived in a hall. It was dark there too. It was difficult not to bump into pillars and walls while rubbing with hands. After a while a little light started coming from somewhere above through small windows, Punguzali guessed that it must be a good day. She also found out that what they were wandering around was a treasure dungeon. But whatever man Aunt Mantakini came looking for, it didn't look like he would be caught. There are many places to hide in that dark dungeon. Where he hides, what? Before we find him, he may find us and come up behind us and stab us to death. There is no question mode in this dungeon. While Pungazali was thinking like this, Mandakini cried out in her unusual voice, a voice that could not be detected as a human voice or an animal voice. It was followed by a panicked human voice. A shadowy figure scurried away. Pungazali decided to be the man who showed his face on the television. After hearing his aunt's voice, Pungazali knew that he was running away in fear of a ghost or devil. The thought made her giggle. After some time Aunt Amandakini again made that voice and made the woman run around. Finally she ran away and crashed into a wooden door. Then he knocked on the door. He gave up and knocked four times. Then the door opened. A woman was seen standing in the open space. The man said something to her. The woman hesitated a bit and the man seemed to scare her. Then she went back. The man was standing by the door, peering. After a while the woman came with a lamp in her hand. Both entered the dungeon. Mandakini took Punghuali by the hand and stood under the cover of a big pillar. In the light of the lamp they took a good look at the man's face. She took Funguzali's hand and stood under the cover of a big pillar. In the light of the lamp they took a good look at the man's face. She took Funguzali's hand and stood under the cover of a big pillar. In the light of the lamp they took a good look at the man's face. The man and the woman with the light went into the interior of the dungeon. A ghost? A devil? You've got a good scare. Why would someone so scared come to such a thing? What the girl asked fell well into the ear of Pungazali. What kind of thing is not so well understood by Pungajali? As they disappeared into the dungeon with the lamp, Mandakini took the flower pot by the hand and dragged it out through the open door. They walked across the walkway and entered a large garden. There, in a secluded place, Mandakini communicated what she had to say to Pungazali in sign language. The message was, My twilight is near. I must see the prince once before I close my last eye. You must go and deliver him with this message. 
We know very well the love that Punguzali had for her aunt, and Punguzali did not have the heart to leave her at such a time, she couldn't mince words. However, at the same time, the thought of this being an opportunity to see Bonnie's lover made her come to an immediate conclusion. After saying goodbye to her aunt, she left. She jumped over the garden wall and crossed the fort gate of Tanjore. There she met all Alwarkadian. She knew that he was also going to see Pawnee's lover because of the Prime Minister's Agna. With the help of that valiant Vaishnava, her journey was also smooth. Luck was on her side throughout the day. They saw the chariot of the younger Brady at the door of the Kudanta astrologer's house. The astrologers entered the house to inquire whether Kundeva Devi might have any news about the prince. There he came to know about the conspirators of the Pandian country through the mouth of the great Palyavatareya. In the treasure dungeon, Punghuali was sure that the person hiding was one of the conspirators. At the same time, it was a remedy for that anguish that the prince might also be in danger from the conspirators. At the place where the princess saved Venati, she also met the prince. It was something that satisfied her more than anything else. The prince accepted her idea of going to Tanjavur. She knew that he was traveling like an elephant in Ceylon without making himself known, and she did not forget that there he separated from the commander and the soldiers and rushed to the beach on an elephant alone. Therefore, she said that it would be better if the prince followed the same method, that if he went alone, he would not be able to enter Tanjore Fort, and if he took her and Venati with him, they would leave him as an elephant. Samadra Kumari. You have a good idea. You are fit to be the first minister of a great kingdom. Thinking of the words spoken by the prince, her heart swelled. But what was the use if everything had happened as she thought up to that moment? Aunt Mandakini was not in the room where the emperor was lying as she had expected. There was no one to inquire about her. Punghwali's bosom said Bagheer whenever she thought of her aunt announcing by signal, My end is near. What is the use of taking so much trouble and talking tactfully and bringing the prince here? Auntie is missing her chest pounded. It seemed that he was still in the dungeon. Her heart sank when she thought that she might have been killed there by the evil conspirator. She wanted to go through the tunnel and look into the dungeon. But in the palace there was an uproar due to the prince's arrival. Women were coming and going all over the place. They came in large numbers and peered into the room where the emperor was lying. Meanwhile, what would someone think if they saw him walking alone to that old sculpture hall? If the conspirator might still be there, it would not be advisable to approach him alone. The dark treasure dungeon gave some fear to many a brave flower girl. That is why she decided to take him to the dungeon and search the dungeon. It took some time for him to argue with Kalantaka Kandera and bring him back to his senses. Thinking of that she now walked very quickly. Her instincts told her that something dire was going to happen soon. So there is no harm if any danger happens to him. She sincerely wished that Auntie would have no time for anything. While entering the sculpture hall, a dark shadow seemed to fall from the palace roof. A figure seemed to be walking along the wall. She paused to see if they were real or an illusion. Woman! Why are you standing? Are you afraid that the lie will be exposed? When she heard what the small gardener said, she hurried upstairs. On entering the sculpture hall, Fungusali pointed out the doorway between the heads of Ravana and Kailangiri to the little Pavatarayar. Right. Get off first. Said the fort commander. But Pung hugely hesitated. She was shaking. At the same time, a supernatural voice was heard shouting screech. She immediately realized that it was her Aunt Mandakani's voice. She also knew that the voice was coming from the chamber inside the palace where the emperor was lying. Soon her hesitation was over. She hurriedly ran towards the palace entrance without paying any attention to the little Pavatarayar. Again the terrible voice was heard. When she entered the room where the emperor lay, the scene that unfolded there impressed her like a great pictorial scene. As the emperor reclined he was holding Aromazai's hands in his own hands. Aunt Mandakini stood in front of them both and shouted. On one side stood Venati and Malayaman's daughter who was to receive her as a daughter-in-law. 
everyone was looking at Mandakini who screamed madly. None of them noticed the sharp work that flowed from the facade of the upper hall. Punghuali ran towards her aunt in one bound. 